Now today we're looking at trouble code P420. That is a trouble code for the catalytic converter. It does not necessarily mean the vehicle needs a catalytic converter. Let's check different things mechanically and also electronically using a scan tool. Super simple. If you're familiar with my videos, I try to make things as simple as possible. 2011 Subaru, 174,000 miles. Let's jump in the cabin. So once again, almost 174,000 miles. Nice to see a six speed in an Outback. You don't see that a lot, so that's really cool. But take a look, P420. So let's start by underneath the vehicle. Check a number of different things regarding the exhaust. And then we'll come back to the scan tool and also check what's going on regarding the oxygen sensor. Super simple if you're not familiar with these scan tools. So let's look at the exhaust system. Now, if you're not familiar or you don't know what a catalytic converter looks like, do a web search. So in this case, 2011 Subaru Outback catalytic converter. Within a few seconds, I have a lot of diagrams and pictures to guide me. And I can look at those pictures and find them on my vehicle. Use the web to your advantage. So right here is the catalytic converter. There's two of them on most vehicles at minimum. You have one in the front and now there's one at the rear. We're dealing with this guy right here. So three points that you want to look at and then I'll put down the camera to show you. Number one is where the exhaust meets up to the cylinder head or in other words the engine. So we have two cylinder heads. We have a passenger side and a driver side. So follow the exhaust. We're going to check that connection point and that connection point. Again, just follow the exhaust. That's all you're doing. Where it meets up to the engine. Number two is, are there any holes in the exhaust, especially before the catalytic converter? Now take a look right here. I did notice there was some welding done here. And my guess is this vehicle probably had a trouble code for the catalytic converter and uh, the owner brought the vehicle to a muffler shop and they just welded in. It's a patch and you can get by for some time, but eventually it will catch up to you. So that's, uh, that's not a good sign, but nonetheless, you want to see if there are any holes. You will certainly hear it, but even if you have a small hole, it will trigger that, trigger that P420 trouble code. Third location, so again, cylinder heads, anything before the catalytic converter and also where the catalytic converter meets up to the rear exhaust. Let's check those three components. Now the first thing I'm doing is just shaking the exhaust. Give it a good tug. Move it back and forth. Nothing is happening here. Everything is really tight. If you find any rattling, any loose pipes, tighten them up. Now take a look. I have three fasteners. You can see two right here. There's another one behind it. These typically are 13 to 14 millimeter fasteners on most vehicles. And I'm using a half inch drive ratchet. That's because the handle is longer compared to a 3 h drive. So I want to get some good torque on here. Don't over torque it though. Don't go crazy. You don't want these to snap. But everything is nice and tight. This is what you want to check for. It. Take the five minutes to do this because these catalytic converters are really expensive. So that's, this is the driver's side. Again, the passenger side, I checked off camera. Everything is really tight there. So that's number one. Number two is where the pipe, so this is a four cylinder engine. One, two, three, four. They all go into the catalytic converter. Check for leaks. As, as I showed you earlier, this certainly was repaired in the past. Now, if you do find a leak, you can buy patches at the local auto parts store and you do essentially you mix these compounds and they, uh, they can give you a weld. But my opinion, if you do find a leak, bring it to a uh, repair shop, a muffler shop, have them weld it in. Number three, again, is where the catalytic converter meets up to the rear exhaust. Maybe a little hard to see because you have the heat shield on. But nonetheless, you, the thing about exhaust leaks, you will certainly hear it. You will certainly hear an exhaust leak. But nonetheless, also take a visual, shake it up, make sure everything is in good shape. So really, the exhaust looks perfectly fine to me in terms of I don't see any holes, nothing is loose. But there is something else to check, and that's the oxygen sensor. And that will go, I'll give you a different view in a moment, but take a look. You have two oxygen sensors. You have one sensor before the catalytic converter and another one after. We're concerned with this guy and we will check this using the scan tool. Super, super easy. 
but you want to see if this is loose. Now, if you're not sure which one is the front, the front oxygen sensor, which one is the rear, just check them both. Why go crazy? Just check them both. Wherever you see an oxygen sensor, just check it. So this, yep, this is nice and tight. This is not loose. Let's check the other one. Right here. Yep, this is also nice and tight. It's not loose whatsoever. I will double check that in a moment. Let's go up top, let's check the connection points for the oxygen sensor. Now again, I want to take a look at that oxygen sensor. So if I follow the oxygen sensor, I have two lines. And right here we have a harness connector. Make sure that these are not loose. In other words, if water gets in where these connection points are, it can trip that P420 code. Now this is the front. As you can see, this goes to the front and that one goes to the rear oxygen sensor. Now, if you're not sure on your vehicle, again, check everything. Check every oxygen sensor. They all look the same regarding the oxygen sensors. And this is a special tool. If you don't have one of these, I can give you, I'll put a link in the description box below. But it's nice because it fits. There's an opening to slit in the wire. Whoops. It's a little tough to see. It's very tight in here. But again, I have my ratchet, half inch drive ratchet over that tool. Make sure it's nice and tight. Yep, and it is, it's not going anywhere. There we go. A loose oxygen sensor will trip, or can trip that 420 code. But just see that everything is nice and tight. We're going to do one more thing with the scan tool and see exactly what's going on here. Now the last test is obtaining data while the vehicle is running. To do that, you need a scan tool that's able to read this data. It's called Data Stream. Now you may think something like this is expensive. In fact, it's not. This is a $40 scan tool. I'll have a link in the description box below to our Amazon affiliate site. The flip side is you can go to the local auto parts store and they may read the data stream for you, especially if you purchase the parts from them. They should be more than happy to do this for you. So let's go down to data stream, and what I want to look for is the rear oxygen sensor. In other words, that's sensor two. And I wanna see what's going on with that. Now you can do select items where it will simply give you the voltage, but in our case, just to make this a little bit more interesting, let's do the graph. So let me just show you. So as you can see, you can do a lot of things with these scan tools. A must have, if you plan on fixing and repairing your own vehicle, purchase one. So oxygen sensor, output voltage, B1 is bank one, S2 is sensor two. That's the key thing, you want sensor two, we want that, and let's see what's going on here. Now let's watch the graph. And I'm just going to let this load up here in a moment. Now after some time, as you can see, we have some dips. Now if you see something like this, it's a very good indication that either the catalytic converter is not working correctly or that rear oxygen sensor is no longer good. That's why we tested it and looked at it earlier. In other words, make sure it's tight, make sure that the connections are really good, make sure there's no water anywhere near it because when you see these dips, you don't want to see this. Now again, you want to do this while the vehicle is in idle. If you start pressing the accelerator, then you'll see a dip, that's normal. But at idle, you should not see this wave. And over time, it just keeps on doing this. So this vehicle really needs a catalytic converter. 174,000 miles here in the Northeast. You know, what can you expect? So uh, it's something that we'll have to repair. So as you can see, it's not too hard just to check everything. Hopefully it's just a loose exhaust, maybe an oxygen sensor, but in this case it just needs a catalytic converter. It's a $600 part, just the part, 600 bucks. At a shop, well over $1,000. So, you know, do your due diligence, maybe you can tackle the job yourself. I will follow up with a replacement once we get the part here. That being said, thank you for watching, stay well, and we'll see you next time.